Lesson number nine: Startups and its registration. Startups is one word which you have been hearing a lot in the last few years. So in this chapter, we study everything related to startups and how we can register a startup. That is very interesting over here. In this entire subject, as I am telling you in every chapter, we are studying not only the theory and what is the substantive law. We are also studying what is the registration procedure. what is the practical application of all these laws so what is a startup that is the first question you should know and in this introduction you please concentrate on what is a startup first then we'll know how to register everything so a startup is basically a new entity which is solving a existing problem in the market and which has high risk of profit or loss failure or success and it is there which can be scalable it can become a big business also or it can become totally lost and it may close also but what is a startup in essence is a new company which has high growth potential and which is solving a problem in the market which was not addressed by many people so the best example for startup in india is especially flipkart flipkart is told as one of the most famous startups in india because when flipkart started there was no e-commerce in india it was one of the first companies which started e-commerce and nobody even thought including you did you ever think that i can buy mobile phone by clicking online it was not very relevant in fact if you remember the first time you purchased anything on flipkart or online you were very scared whether whether the product will come or not so what did flipkart do they did cash on delivery and things like that anyway what we have to understand is very simple a startup is something which can really encourage the economy it can also provide lot of employment and it can make even normal people do business with the correct support so in this chapter we study all about startups india is a country where we have a startup policy not every country has and india took a decision under the new government of india which was formed in 2014 where they said that it is impossible to give employment to everyone we have to encourage people to have their own employment or what we call as self employment and that is the reason why they came up with startup policy to encourage more and more entrepreneurs more and more youngsters to start their own business to start their own service so that is the reason why india came up with startup india concept where they had a policy to encourage new businesses the department of industrial policy and promotion is the main spearhead for the startup india initiative not only the government of india but also many state governments have taken this policy of startup and have their own rules to encourage new people to start business there are many incubation centers there are many funding agencies which are encouraging new businesses new innovation new invention which will help the society and also it will form as a business thereby growing the economy and also generating employment so in startup what do we study we study how do we register a startup startup means it could be any form of entity you can do startup as proprietorship partnership private company llp public company whatever may be your choice but we should understand how to register and more importantly after registration what are the other implications like what are the tax benefits i can take then what is the other licenses which i have to take from the government and also what are the agreements like for example founders agreement between the people who started if there is more than one founder or you can also have something called a shareholders agreement basically to protect it and also if you are doing a invention how will you protect your patent how will you protect your trademark your copyright all these things are covered in this particular concept of post incorporation compliance relating to startups so this we study in detail in this chapter there are also very practical things over here where they talk about financing of a startup basically financing of a startup can be equity or debt equity is any finance like capital debt is like a loan so in equity investment also what is so interesting is they even told suppose there is a new startup how to approach somebody how to make a pitch how to give a presentation how to give a proposal even such things they have added so basically in equity we can say that first thing is seed funding as the word goes seed seed means very small in the initial stage not only small initial the stages sometimes initial stage you may need only uh, 50000 or 5 lakh or 10 lakh depending on what is your business 
so whoever does the funding in the seed stage the first stage we call it a seed capital so there are many agencies even which give only seed capital to help new people start the business and we study that in detail we study about angel investor angel investors are usually individuals or group of investors which will help the startup in the initial stages again after that we study about series funding so you might have heard series a funding series b funding or you have heard something like flipkart got uh, so many crores in series e funding so basically it is the stages series a usually we say that for 6 months to 2 years what funding we give we call it a series a and usually there is no rule but usually in this stage whoever invest will take 10 to 30% of the company for the investment which they give then it could be series b that is a bigger round where you need let us say 50 to 100 crores so depending on what is the company and what is the stage you will have the series a series b series c series d e till whatever series you can go and as the series goes bigger the company will get more money and the founders uh, have to dilute their uh, in uh, dilute their interest they have to dilute their shares for example the people who started uh, flipkart sachin and binni bansal in fact it went to such a stage now walmart has purchased flipkart and sachin bansal has exited the company the person who started the company has exited the company of course he has got hundreds of crores but that is how the series funding works so he has exited from the company now completely so this is what we study in detail micro units development and refinancing agency bank or we call it as mudra you might have heard about mudra loan yes so mudra loan is again a scheme of the government which will help new businesses even if somebody wants to start a small vegetable shop they want to start a small beauty parlor they may need 50000 so in mudra loan scheme without collateral everybody is given the loan and they have to repay within the time and if they repay they are going to get further loan and that is the advantage in mudra so mudra again will help even the smallest of small person to start a business they don't have to think that oh i don't have money how will i start business mudra loan is the answer so there are many more things like this now let us try to study this chapter in detail startup and its registration process startup is one word you have heard very popularly especially from the year 2014 so in the year 2014 our government of india under the prime minister has announced the startup india policy what is startup a startup is nothing but a new company which is trying to solve a problem in society in a very big way and at the same time it is giving employment to many people and remember india is a country which has overpopulation 65% of our population is below 35 years of age it is important that indians start up and not just look for job and it is impossible for everybody to get job we have to become the job giver and not just job seeker the youth of india should think of becoming employer and not just employee yes everybody need not become employer then there will be no employee but the attitude of indian should change in india we are very scared we just want to have a job after education but that is impossible if we have such a big population so government of india has had this new concept the startup india policy to encourage more and more indians to start up and to give them that ecosystem to help israel is one country which is very very encouraging for startups and new companies so what is a startup a startup is nothing but a new business it is a new business okay and then it is a venture which is having the demands of the marketplace it wants to solve a problem in society by having a viable business model i will give you a very simple example which you will definitely know that is oyo rooms what problem in society did oyo rooms solve if you have a travel and if you are traveling the biggest problem you if you are you to get is budget hotel room which is clean which is safe and which you are sure of the booking this is a very very big problem 
of course every day you cannot go for holiday and stay in resort if you want to go for business travel or quickly you want to just spend the night that time there was no proper solution so what did oyo room do so ritesh agarwal of oyo rooms the founder a very young person who was not even 20 years of age what he told is that there is a problem in society let me develop viable business model Today Oyo Rooms is the biggest hotel chain in India and also it is in the top 10 of the whole world it is aiming to be in the top 3 or top 5 in the next 5 years but Oyo Rooms does not own even one single hotel so what do they have they have the software they have the entire technology for the hotel booking so they have tie up with all the lodges and the hotel room and that is how they are able to have the biggest hotel chain today if you go to some new city especially in india it is a small city you are thinking where will i stay and if you are going with family you are very scared but if you see oh your room you have a trust you have a brand you feel okay this place is safe this place is clean this place booking is confirmed otherwise night i have to uh, struggle to get one room where do i stay i don't know those problems is not there so it is basically a new business venture which is designed to develop and have a scalable business model so it will solve the problems in society in a very big way which will help everybody who is having this problem so oyo is just one example same way we have our ola cabs we have our flipkart these are also examples of startups which solved different societal problems but this is just technology but there is a huge opportunities so the startup should think of how to help farmers how to help the production side how to help the manufacturing side so whether it is oyo whether it is ola whether it is flipkart these are just not even 5% india has 95% problem and it also has lot of people who are having very good ideas youngsters have idea you need to encourage them you need to motivate them you need to give them the right environment for them to implement the idea that is the concept behind startup india so how does a startup work the evolution stage of a startup the typical early task in forming startup are to have a team and they should have the right skill sets and they should have the know how from the knowledge they have to collect the financial resources and other elements and they must conduct the research on the target market suppose i want to do a startup on how to help the farmers to grow the right crops because everybody is growing potato everybody is growing tomato suddenly uh, per kg it will become only 5 rupees and everybody loses money but if i develop some technology or some app how to help farmers they will know which one to grow which one not to grow that is a great solution which can be done and the startup india policy will encourage such people because indians are very creative indians are very talented they just need the support to do their own idea recently there was a very young boy who has invented a water purification just for 30 rupees this will save so many lives in india this will help thousands of people to drink safe water just with 30 rupees it is a small device for 30 rupees and that will be a huge game changer so this is a startup but if he has to give for 1000 people he can give if he has to give for 10 crore people this 30 rupees item he needs support he needs knowledge he needs team he needs financial resources he needs capital he needs every kind of uh, support so that is why startup india will help these startups a startup will then begin to build a first minimum viable product which is usable what we call as prototype and that will validate and assess the need and how the startup can take it to the next level that time they will go for business model and the other concepts so once you have a basic team you should make a minimum 
viable product and then test it then you go for the business model how you make money out of it how you can employ people how you can generate employment all that is a later stage next very important as a student of law you should know a shareholder agreement is signed to confirm the commitment and ownership of the contributions of the founders so founders and investors should enter into some form of written agreement which is usually what we call as a shareholder agreement so that will also have to deal with the intellectual properties and assets that may be generated by the startup so when startup has doing something they may have their unique patent they may have their unique uh, trademark they may have copyright they may have a unique uh, design in fact we have intellectual property rights right in this uh, uh, subject all this how do you protect it and who has the rights that should be in the shareholder agreement next a company may cease to be a startup as it passes various milestones and slowly it will become a public tradable company with a initial public offering ipo so startup is still it grows once it has reached the growth stage no more we call it startup some may take 3 years some may take 7 years but usually between 3 to 7 years most of the startups if it is successful because if there are 100 startups only 5 to 7 will succeed succeed but all the other 93 which fail has also contributed to the startup environment and they are helping more and more people to start up and also the 93 which will fail they can go for a new startup they will learn from all the experience which they had and they can get a good product okay and this is important and later they can even go for a merger or acquisition with a big company if they are successful so when we come to business model for startup there are two ways bottom up or top down approach so bottom up is right from the last customer we are trying and doing the business growth from top down we will try the niche customers which are the rich customers and that is another option so that is uh, depending on each uh, type of market you can choose it startup ecosystem will generally have the network of interaction among people organization and their environment the resource skills what do we require time money then the uh, talent and skills are very very important for startup here i would like to give the example of the startup paytm paytm is another indian startup which is very very successful which is helping in digital transactions and this is primarily because of the hard work which they did for many years the resources that flow through ecosystems are obtained primarily from the meetings between people and organizations that are active and they are part of the startup ecosystem so this startup ecosystem is nothing but a supporting environment where we have mentors where we have investors where we have scientists where we have the government policy where we also have things like the incubator all these people will help a startup to grow without support a startup can never grow that is something which you should know coming to the startup india policy so government of india realized that if we are only trying the to tell indians to go get the job it is not sufficient so the prime minister of india during the 15th august speech from the red fort gave the call for the startup india policy he told indians should not only become job seeker but job generator job giver not only employee but also indians should become employers even if you give job for one person you are an employer not that you should give job for thousand people but if you give job for one person it is equal to two because you yourself have a job plus one person you're giving a job so the more and more people become employer india will become very strong we will not have the problem of unemployment which is the biggest problem india is going to face because of the huge population of young people who is 
below 35 years of age simplification and hand holding funding support and incentives industry academia partnership and incubation this was the three pillars with the prime minister of india mr narendra modi has told about startup so he said the government will help indians young people to go and start their own business to solve the problem in society in form of a business to make money to give employment to make sure that india is a superpower and a very very strong economy for all that the government of india by the prime minister himself has taken this call of the startup india policy according to our policy which is given by the government of india the key points which you should know for exam is that a startup or a company will be called startup for up to 5 years from the date of the incorporation so they get all the benefits then all the support for up to 5 years from the incorporation after that they have to have their own uh, power and they have to not take the support so initially it is very difficult no that is why 5 years you get the support if it is turnover for any of the financial has not exceeded 25 crores then it is a startup next it's working towards innovation development deployment and commercialization of new product process services driven by technology or intellectual property that is also a startup so it is not that suppose tomorrow i will open one provision store okay i will open provision store then i will sell wheat rice vegetable that is not a startup the startup is not just some new business it is innovation you are trying to solve a problem like oh your rooms i told you like paytm they solve the problem of digital cash or new products process which is by technology or intellectual property which can help lakhs and crores of people that is a startup and that is what the policy is saying to avail the benefits of the startup india policy the company which is a startup should get a certificate from the inter ministerial board this is very important the board consists the following members the dipp that is the joint secretary of the department of industrial policy and promotion simply if you start a company you are not a startup you should start a company then you must take a certificate from whom from the inter ministerial board of certification as you can see so who is there in this in inter ministerial board of certification dipp then the representative of department of science and technology representative of department of biotechnology these people will be there so this three people together should look at the startup should look at the idea should look at the product or the service and then they will give a certificate if you have the certificate you get benefits of the startup india policy recognition of startup process so how does that process happen first one decide the business involving the innovative idea what is your idea take the recommendation or the letter of funding for the patent then incorporation so registration of company llp whatever then decision should be taken for granting of registration by inter ministerial board this is what we studied so you get the benefits then you get the certificate of registration so you should be having some innovation some new thing you should do somebody is having a cloth uh, shop okay you are there uh, selling uh, uh, t-shirt jeans you are also doing that is not a startup that is another new business that's all but if you are trying to solve a problem which is scalable which can become very big like transport problem now you have two wheeler taxi you have three wheeler auto taxi then you have four wheeler like ola uber all this is solving the problem of society see if i am only alone one person and if i have to go in a taxi it is 500 rupees but if i go in two wheeler taxi it may be just 50 or 60 rupees that is a very big problem i am getting solved so such kind of business should be there for startup okay or for farmers if you are able to help farmers to reduce the wastage that is the biggest help you can do so i am giving you example like this there are thousand things or for uh, educating the rural children 
there are hundred things which can be done but it should be innovation it should be a new idea it should be using technology then only we call it startup okay that is how we recognize and then the most important is is this uh, certificate which you get from the board next we come to the key points of the startup india policy what are the important points which is by the government of india this might not be very relevant for exam but this knowledge will help you to answer okay 10000 crore startup funding pool so government has made a fund 10000 crore and it will give for startups reduction in patent registration fees so patent registration fees by government registrar of patents is reduced the improved bankruptcy code which will ensure 90 day exit suppose startup fail there is a easy way to exit in the bankruptcy court freedom from mystifying inspections for 3 years of op operation so simply labor department will come and say you didn't uh, maintain that you didn't maintain this give me this much fine so all this has been totally ruled out so 3 years you don't get any inspection if you are startup startup means what you should get the certificate obtain certificate from interministerial board of certification okay only then your startup that time only you get this benefits freedom from capital gains tax for 3 years of operation freedom from tax for first three so income tax is not there for first three years this is a major advantage but of course first three years many times you don't make profit only so this is just on paper yes there is no income tax but it is not very relevant self certification compliance so most of it there is no license raj so the director or the founder themselves can certify with the help of company secretary and that is a major boost so that the director can concentrate on the company the business the innovation and not which form to file what is that some government officer will come and he will tell you didn't file that you didn't file this give me the fine he will give notice no headache because it is self certification self means company itself okay with the help of company secretary create of innovation hub under atal innovation mission so government has a new scheme atal innovation mission so they will create innovation hub they will give money to colleges like atal tinkering lab and there they will go for uh, the innovation hub where they will give fund for the students to do some new research to target 5 lakh schools to involve 10 lakh children in innovation related program as i told you so that everybody innovation a small country like israel is one of the top innovators the israel country population will not even be as much as a big city in india like chennai or bangalore or hyderabad or uh, something like that but israel invested lot of money time on research and development r and d that is why though it is a very small country it is a very very strong country so india should also innovate so we are encouraging it new schemes to provide ipr protection to startup firms so intellectual property rights we have new schemes to protect them for tomorrow if anybody tries to misuse encourage entrepreneurship within the country promote india across the world as a startup hub so Uh, government of india wherever they go they are telling now india is startup up come and give some uh, uh, investment for the indian startups after the government of india came up with startup india policy many states in india have also encouraged this and they have their own policies this is just for a overview so west bengal had a startup policy in 2016 to nurture and help to get all stakeholders on a single platform what did they do they made startup bengal website and the policy is for 5 years uttar pradesh also has made to invest in it department okay they have made a website for that it is running in motion right now then we have rajasthan odisha karnataka so each one have their own website and the startup is for different number of years so in karnataka for example to have 2000 startups related to tech and 600 on product including 25 to solve social problem this is the goal of the startup karnataka and it is for 5 years same way we have the gujarat 
Jharkhand. These are the states which are supporting Startup India by having their own policies. That is just for your idea. You don't have to study for exam. Let us look at the exemptions right now. So we have the exemptions which is there, which is the 11 exemptions which you should know. First one, simple process for starting business. That means for registration. Now it is very simple under Startup India. Reduction of the cost like for incorporation right now, the government fees up to 10 lakhs capital is zero. Of course, there are other costs like digital signature and stamp duty, but the cost relating to the government fees for company is zero. Easy access to fund, so easy to get capital. Tax holiday for three years, no income tax. And startup can apply for tender because before every government tender will say, Company which is 5 years old, company which is having 10 years experience should apply. What will startup do? It's a new company. So government has told even startup can apply for tender which will give them equal footing with the experienced company. R&D facilities will be provided. No time consuming compliance because it is self regulation. Tax saving for investors. Then the startup can choose the investors. Easy exit under the insolvency and bankruptcy code and a great chance to meet other entrepreneurs. So these are the exemptions for startups and the advantages which is there. Going forward, we will see what are the tax exemptions for startups under our Startup India policy. And this is effective from the financial year 17-18. So for any startup which is incorporated after 1st April 2016, they will be eligible for 100% tax rebate on the profit for the first three years out of the first seven years. So what they're saying is that first they said that it is first three years, but now they're saying for three years out of the first seven years, they will get 100% tax rebate. But remember, they have to be startup as per the Startup India policy they should get the certificate from the interministerial board which we have already studied only then they get rebate for three years out of the first seven years initially they said first three years but then first three years many startups don't even make a profit it was not very effective also annual turnover must not be exceeding 25 crores in any financial year up to 31st march 2021 so if your annual turnover is more than 25 crores then you are not eligible for the tax exemption. So what are we understanding here? So first thing you should be incorporated after 1st April 2016. Before that you are not eligible. Okay. Then it is for 3 years out of the first 7 years. And over and above that you should not have crossed 25 crores in your turnover up to 31st March 2021. That means in the first 5 years you should not have crossed more than 25 crores turnover if you cross you don't get tax rebate that's all you get all other benefits tax rebate you are not going to get the startups have to pay minimum alternative tax so the mat is there at 18.5 percent this is exempt for first five years in case startup fails to make any profit so if you are not made any profit for first years the mat will be exempted for the startups so this is another very good move for the startups next we come to the founders if the the founders have to hold shares then the startup must have a continuous holding of 51 percent voting shares in order to carry forward the losses so this is relating to carry forward of losses so carry forward of losses is one advantage which you get if the founders hold the shares for a continuous period which is 51% of the holding. So they can carry forward the losses because it is the same owner and not a new owner. Sometimes startup will sell that time. They may misuse this law. That is why the law says that you can carry forward losses for a startup. But what they're saying is that the founder should hold the shares and that has to be held 51% of the voting rights. So 51% of the voting rights should be with the founders 
and this should be a continuous holding not that they buy they sell they were 51 then they become 25 then they become 20 then they become again 60 again 70 again 30 no no it should be continuous 51 percent holding then they get the advantage of carry forward of losses for a startup carry forward of losses will really help because they don't have to pay the taxes and it will really be a very huge incentive next there is different taxes for new domestic manufacturing companies that have been set up after 1st March 2016. So if you start any manufacturing because government of India wants to show India as a manufacturing hub like we have make in India concept. So what does make in India tell that India will be encouraging all the companies whether it is Indian companies foreign companies to come make investment and manufacture in in india so that is why they call make in india how they say made in india like that make in india it is a policy to encourage more and more manufacturing companies okay so if there is any company which is incorporated after first march 2016 they have the tax at 25 percent so they get some exemption there and the tax is proposed on the condition that the company do not claim incentive under profit or investment. So they should not claim incentive under profit or investment. Then they will have a tax rate of only 25%. This is the advantage which a startup will get. Going further, let us see the benefits or exemptions for startups under the Companies Act of 2013. So what does the Companies Act uh, talk about startup? So in Companies Act, startup company means private company incorporated under Companies Act 1956 or 2013 and recognized as startup by a certificate that is issued by the Department of Industrial Policy and Promotion, Ministry of Commerce and Industry. So that is the concept relating to startup. So it provides that an amount of rupees 25 lakh or more received by startup company by way of convertible note pay repayable within five years from date of issue in a single portion from a person shall not be treated as a deposit as we understood that if there is 25 lakh rupees or more received by startup company that is by way of a convertible note so convertible note is one type of instrument and which is repayable within five years so if it is repayable within five years and they have received the money as a convertible note that is a single portion that is in a single portion the money has been received from a person shall not be treated as a deposit so you know very well in companies act we have section 73 to 76 a which has very strict guidelines for deposits especially for private companies the, the guidelines are even more stricter but what they're saying here is if you're a startup first of all to be called as a startup company what should you do you should get a recognition by the dipp department of industrial policy and promotion so this is you have to remember very well dipp department of industrial policy and promotion this comes in many places even in fema so dip so dipp ministry of commerce and industry it is not under ministry of corporate affairs so this dipp should give a certificate and say that this company is a startup and once it is a startup they will get the other benefits like what if they get 25 lakh rupees or more by way of a convertible note but it should be within five years and it should be a single portion that time if you are a startup see if you are not just a company startup means for companies act purpose you should get a certificate from the department of industrial policy and promotion then you will not be treated that amount as a deposit so you don't have to follow the deposit rules or the other guidelines so this is the advantage which you get next the provisions of clause a to e of section 73 so that is what i was telling you prohibition of acceptance of deposit shall not apply to startup company for five years from date of the incorporation so please remember don't get confused many clients come to me also and say sir we started a new company so for us uh, the deposit rules are not applicable for five years we saw in the website 
but that is not true please remember you should tell everyone if you start a new company or not a startup you should start a new company under the companies act 2013 and after that please remember you should get a certificate or a recognition as a startup that is by the dipp department of industrial policy and promotion ministry of commerce so if the dipp gives you only then you are a startup only that time if you have that certificate for 5 years from incorporation you don't have to worry about section 73 clause a to e okay the upper limit on acceptance of deposit has been enhanced to 35% of net worth instead of earlier 25% so for startup you can take up to 35% of net worth as your deposit that is another advantage but this is very much theoretical many startups are not able to take deposits because the uh, people are not able to trust them about the repayment they are able to get investors but deposits is not very popular but it is a option which is open startups are allowed to issue employee stock option to promoters working as employees so this is another advantage so employee stock option can be given to promoters working as employees and this is the exemption which is given to the startups now when we talk about this deposits this is very much theoretical because the investor doesn't want to put money as deposit because maximum he will get is the uh, principal amount plus the premium but if he puts as investment if he puts uh, 10 lakh rupees 10 lakh can even become 10 crores if the company does very well 10 lakhs can even become zero if the company does not do well and it is a failure but deposit means it is not very attractive compared to the risk in a startup deposit the investor will rather give deposit to a very big established company or they will give deposit to let us say a bank or something like that so this is what you should be aware about the startups the limits with regard to sweat equity that can be issued by startup company from 25% paid up capital to 50% paid up capital so for a sweat equity we can issue up to 50% of the paid up capital for the sweat equity in a startup next we come to annual return so annual return of startup company may be signed by the company secretary or where there is no company secretary by director of the company so annual return can be signed by company secretary or where there is no company secretary director of the company for startups uh, convening at least one board meeting in each of the half calendar year within a gap between two meetings not less than 90 days is sufficient as per section 173 see for normal companies we need to do four board meetings which you are already aware so this four board meetings will be required for a uh, normal company but for startup or a small company or dormant company you have the advantage where you can have only uh, two board meetings in a year that is one board meeting in half calendar year that means january to july you can have one board meeting and you have to give 90 days gap and then you can have the second board meeting so there should be one meeting january to july january to june and the second meeting july to december so january to june is 6 months first half of the calendar year then july to december is second half you can have one meeting each but between the meetings there should be at least 90 days gap so if you have uh, june 25th you cannot say i will do july 10th because 90 days gap is not there though you are doing january to june one meeting july to december one meeting in this example you if you do a meeting january uh, june 25th you have to take 90 days july august september so september 26 27 like that you can do the second meeting that is the advantage for a startup now we will look at the registration steps what form should startup venture have this is important so it is in the, what you need to know is that startup means it is a business it can be sole proprietor it can be company it can be partnership it can be llp depending on the nature the most popular is obviously company because when you have a company 
you will have investors for investors it is easy to invest in company compared to llp and also investor it is easy to sell the shares tomorrow if it is company as compared to llp or partnership firm and foreign investors will definitely prefer company because it is more safe for them there are many precedents where they can uh, sell the shares and they can make a profit on their investment so first one is formation of company in india so in under the indian companies act we have the concept of private company public company and private company is very attractive because initially you are not getting money from public and also in private company most of the sections are exempt for the private companies so that is the advantage so roc is the person or the office who will register a company in india right now we have the central registration center that is one common center for incorporation of all the companies in india this has made incorporation very fast very efficient very professional and also there is no corruption because of this this is the advantage now we come to what are the types of companies which can be formed in india so in india we have limited and unlimited liability so obviously limited liability is more attractive because the liability of the members is limited to the shares which they have purchased the other option is limited by guarantee but that is not very very popular so incorporated company can have any of the following three forms private company public company and one person company so these are the three options for a incorporated company so each one has the best but for startup the most popular is the private company because in one person company there can be only one shareholder it is not very popular especially if you want investors you want somebody else to come give money then you want to do business together then you want to sell the company tomorrow it is not very attractive for one person but private company is very attractive because the compliance also is very less compared to public company and investors also prefer it rules is also less easy to run you just need two directors it is definitely more advantageous next come to public company public company might not be required initially for startup but depending on the nature of the business you may want a public company once we know what are the type of companies and as i told you the private company is the most popular let us now go to the other kind of companies which will give us an idea of what is the things which a startup can do after choosing the company we have to go for the charter documents when we say charter documents it is mainly the memorandum of association and the articles of association so this will have all the objectives and the regulations for the management of the company we already know that memorandum of association is like the uh, constitution of the company and the articles of association is like the bylaws of the company next what are the legal formalities for incorporation of company so we have primarily the pre incorporation formalities and the post incorporation formalities what are the important points for startup to be followed so let us have a look at it the first thing is choose the right legal structure for your startup see as we know that company is there but in company also whether it is private company public company one person company you have to choose sometimes llp also might be sufficient for you so you must choose the right legal structure then you must look at the registrations and business licenses like the gst like the pan like the tan like the labor registration trademark copyright whichever is applicable for you trade license shops and commercial establishment license all these registrations and licenses like import export code has to be if you are in food business food license this has to be taken after that intellectual property protection like the copyright design and the patent if required you must protect yourself because tomorrow you have to make sure that you are monetizing your intellectual property assets then you should have a founder equity split and vesting so founder equity so we should have the 
provisions so that the founders don't have any problems in the future. Then you should have founder agreement which we also call as shareholder agreement. These are the points to be kept in mind for a startup. Going further, employment contracts. In you, if you are a startup, you are going to have different employees. So you should have the right labor laws and also you should have the correct employment contract and you should give them all the benefits which they deserve. Then we come to employee stock option pool. If it is required, you can create it. Even for startups, it is allowed. Then third party agreements with your vendors, with your suppliers, all these contracts have to be signed within time. Then you must make sure of your investment structure, whether it will be a holding and subsidiary, what will be the founders holding, how much shares will be for the investors, things like that. And the most important where even a company secretary is involved is the compliance management. For a startup, it is important to follow all the laws. When we say law, it is not just company law. We have the company law, that is Companies Act 2013, then we have the income tax, we have indirect tax which is GST, we have Real Estate Regulation Act, then we have the intellectual property rights if it is manufacturing environmental laws, labor laws because you are having the employees. So multiple laws come into picture, Foreign Exchange Management Act if you are getting foreign money or if you are doing import-export, then import-export code you need to get. So there are so many things a startup has to manage. So better if you have a compliance management system, it will be like a ready reference. It will be like an Excel sheet with all the different tabs, which will help you to understand under which law, what is the compliance. You can also have a compliance calendar. Means like in April, what are the forms to file? We must file DIR 3 yc for the company law. Then in labor law, we must get the shops and commercial establishment license. Then environmental law, we should get the permission like that. So every month, if you make a checklist and the company secretary of the startup will ensure that all this is completed, then it will be very easy to take things forward. So these are the things which will be required for a startup. So the important points for startup as follows. That is the right structure, the registration of the licenses, intellectual property, founder equity split and investing, founder agreement like shareholder agreement, the employment contract, ESOP, third party agreements with vendors, suppliers, ev everybody, investment structuring and compliance management. So all these things have to be kept in mind. Just because if you have a very good business idea, very good technology, your startup will not be successful. In fact, if you don't do compliance, your startup will be utter flop. That is why you should make sure that everything is kept in mind. Next, we come to the financing options which are available for startups. What are the financing options which a startup can explore? Seed capital. Seed capital is nothing but the initial money which a startup can explore. So in seed capital, what happens is that the startup business needs the nurturing of finance to explore and grow. The funding is done at the nascent stages because the very word seed is in the nascent stage, in the beginning stage. Even for a plant, first you will put the seed, correct? Only then you will put the uh, other things like manure, fertilizer, much later. First is always seed, then you will put water. So like that, even in a startup, seed capital is the capital at the very first stage and this will be a small amount but it is very important because without seed capital you can't do much so the capital is seed capital because it is given at the nascent stages we also call it a seed funding so any funding which you get in the initial stages seed funding seed funding can even be as less as 1 lakh or 2 lakhs or even in some industries something like 50 to 70 lakhs it is the initial stage if you want to go and grow higher, you may need 10 crores, 20 crores. That is not seed capital. Okay, Seed capital is what you get initially and usually the money is a small amount to start. Just to start and make sure you have a minimal viable product. Okay, Seed capital is the initial capital used for starting a business. Often which is coming from the founder's personal assets. Friends, family for covering the initial operating expenses. Okay, 
and they will also attract the venture capitalist so if you have seed funding at least you can register a company then you can do the basic things like taking first one or two three employees starting the work having a product that time you can go to venture capital and you can tell them we already done this we ourselves have put our own money so very often the founders put in the seed money the founders themselves put in the seed money and that is what is the advantage which you get so this type of funding is often obtained in exchange for equity stake in the enterprise although it's very less the formal contractual overhead than standard equity financing so somebody will tell that we will be giving you let us say just 1 lakh so for 1 lakh they may get maximum 3% of the equity so 3% you may feel that 3% is such a small number but then at 1 lakh you are, you cannot expect you to get 10 or 20% of the company sometimes it may be just 1 or 2% 3 maximum within 5% so this is in exchange of the equity because the person who is giving 1 lakh today tomorrow that 1% or 3% may become even 1 crore also correct that is the reason why the seed funding is given in exchange of equity because banks and venture capital investors view seed capital as a risk because for bank if they want to give 1 lakh 10 lakh even 30 lakh like that for a new company they are very scared for a established company they will give even 20 crores 100 crores in fact banks have made that mistake they gave lot of money to vijay malya kind of companies and they have lost the money but if they gave the same money to startup yes some people might not have repaid but most of them would have made a successful business and given banks are very traditional banks don't want to take risk because startup is very very risky if 10 startups open eight of them will fail so bank don't want to take that risk that is why for seed capital it will be usually through friends family or any private investor who will give the money and they will take equity risk is even they may lose the money but if they gain they may gain a lot that is the advantage okay uh, since it's a new venture uh, the bank etc will not be interested so capital providers may wait until the business is more established before making larger investments of venture capital funding so even venture capital funds will usually want to give money to a business which is already started which is doing some kind of business not somebody who is starting from zero so that is the seed capital next we come to financing of two types equity financing and then we come to the debt financing so now we need to understand over here the equity financing and the angel investors or the other kind of financing first we will come to equity financing in equity financing we need to understand that it is first of all one of the two types of financing broadly we can call as equity and debt these are the two broad types of financing when we come to equity financing it is basically the ownership so it is raising funds equity means bold with you as a co-owner so it is as good as two people coming together and having a partnership so equity financing is as good as bringing somebody to your house and asking them to stay with you it is as serious as that so you will want to do that only if you are very sure with somebody correct same way in in our business if you want a co-owner you have to be very very sure it is as good as bringing somebody to your house and making them stay with you that is how serious it is so when we say equity they are having all the co-ownership just like so debt is nothing but it is like a loan loan you will take and you will repay some guest will come to your house they will stay for two days and they will go there is no problem you are in fact very happy you will host them you will have enjoyment with them but if somebody will tell i will stay in your house forever it has to be a family member correct or if you are uh, having any room it should be a roommate for at least 3 4 years something like that that is the reason why equity is very serious and you have to be very sure before you take a equity financing this person shall contribute to the business capital 
they will share the risk and participate in the profit sharing so equity owner will not only give money they will also share the risk with you and also the profit startups are usually equity financed because the people who are giving the money it is more attractive in a startup yes as i told you in 10 startups only 8 startups will succeed sorry 8 startups will fail and only one or two will succeed correct still still the one or two will succeed in such a way that i can make 10 times the money i may give 10 lakhs okay but the 10 lakhs may even become 1 crore but if i put the money in the bank 10 lakhs will become 11 lakhs that's all or maximum 12 lakhs that is why in a startup there are people who are ready of course the idea should be good product should be good the entrepreneur the founder should be very strong there are investors who are ready to give money because they are ready to lose the money because if they invest in four to five different startups at least one will click one will become successful even though they had loss in four startups it is okay they can make up all the loss in the one so equity is very very popular when we come to the startups so private equity is another type or angel investors angel investors are who come in the early stages of the startup and they also apart from giving money they give lot of ideas and lot of uh, suggestions in this equity the first type so remember we are still under equity in equity financing first type we call it as venture capital venture capital as the name goes they will give fund to new ventures new businesses and they will give the capital for the growth venture capital will not only give money but they are experienced in the field they know how to take decision which business will work which will not work yes after all that not that every uh, company which they invest in will become successful definitely not but they have the experience and that will help the companies which are starting up apart from the money which they give so venture capitalist are basically companies or funds that raise funds from different people together and they have one common fund so all the different people will give money so this is what we call as the venture capital fund and this fund will be used as the corpus so if each one gives uh, 10 lakhs simple example i'm giving 10 people will give it will become 1 crore so 1 crore we call as the venture capital corpus and that 1 crore will be used to fund the different startups so what is the job so venture capital you can think just in a simple way something like a bank bank will also take money from so many people and then it will give loan no something like that in a simple way but here it is not as uh, uh, simple as giving loan because you have to decide which business is good so the people who give money here are different investors and the venture capital will have professional people who have the knowledge about the business they will take a decision to whom to give money which startup to give money they are ready to invest in small businesses funding young unproven companies that appear to have great idea and great management team so they will not give you'll say i want to open a big mall they might not be very interested to give venture capital usually will give for a very risky business new business new idea which can make a very big impact which can make a change in society which can have lot of profits those kind of things if somebody told you that there is something called as facebook before facebook came nobody would have believed but that facebook has changed the world same way for whatsapp or paytm or flipkart or uber or ola or zomato or swiggy all these are new ideas which has changed the market so the venture capital will usually fund in these kind of companies okay venture capital usually prefer convertible instrument like preference shares which can be converted to the equity shares things like that they include the compulsory convertible preference shares which is the most popular and compulsorily convertible debentures this is the second thing most of the startups where i have also seen where i have also worked as a consultant the venture capital always wants to invest as compulsory convertible preference shares ccps so in generally in a startup if you say ccps everybody knows what it is and the venture capital will invest in this because 
though it is preference shares they can even ask for a preference dividend initially and later they can convert to equity share also or after 2 3 years the venture capital can sell their stake how much ever they have let us say they have 40% stake they can sell it to a bigger investor so that is the advantage in our venture capital if you invest in compulsory convertible preference shares what are the documents between the investor and startup which is involved in the funding procedure so now that you know what is venture capital funding let us look at the documents the sequence of events how it happens first is always what we call as a term sheet or letter of intent so there you have general points like what is the overall funding what is the reason what is the time limit what will be the uh, uh, purpose of the funding for what money they have to use it and general conditions like how many shares will be given for whom is it compulsory convertible the rules relating to that the conditions correct all that so they will enter into an agreement okay next the contracting parties will enter into a share subscription agreement or a debenture subscription agreement so once we finish term sheet that is the first step that means both of you are ready to come together that is the startup and the venture capital so venture capital and the startup will be very sure of this then they go for the share subscription agreement after that the contracting parties may enter into a shareholders agreement so this is more commitment so first term sheet you have some commitment then you have share subscription agreement you have more commitment shareholder agreement is even more commitment because you are even giving the money the venture capitalist or any investor is giving the money and that will be a more concrete agreement with promises which can be legally enforceable in the court of law and shareholder agreement can also be enforceable with the articles of association of the company so the investor when i say investor it can be seed funding it can be angel investor it can be venture capital investor it can be a high net worth individual investor it can be anybody who is investing it can be a big company who is investing in a small company this is generally the sequence of documents which you have to know not only for exam in the real world this is what happens every day in a funding so you have to be very well versed after that we have issuance of the securities through private placement process so most of it because it is in private company we will be doing private placement process where we are giving for a select individuals so select group of people or select individuals will be given the shares or securities when we say securities it can be uh, equity shares preference shares compulsory convertible preference shares as i told you or debentures any form of security will be issued after that we will file the e forms to the roc that is a a uh, compliance procedure it is a regular procedure which a company secretary will do and this is what is where you have to advise them next we have the allotment of securities so allotment of securities will be done so issue and allotment so issue is offer allotment is after the money comes you will allot the share security whatever it is so both are different so don't get confused between issue and allotment both are different that has to be done one after the other then we have amendment of the articles as per shareholder agreement so as i told you here the shareholder agreement can be enforced with the aoa and that amendment should take place then we have completion of the condition subsequent what is condition subsequent in the shareholder agreement there will be something called as sub, uh, condition precedent condition subsequent condition subsequent means after the funding after funding what are the requirements which the company or the startup should do what should they do it may be compliance requirement it may be for allotment of shares it may be like giving the share certificate whatever it is these things have to be done after the uh, entire allotment is completed